Hi, welcome to On This Day in Tudor History with me, Claire Ridgway, author of On This Day in Tudor History. Now, where am I taking you today? Well, I'm taking you to the reign of Queen Elizabeth I. For On This Day in Tudor History, the 4th of January, 1575, courtier and diplomat Sir William Pickering died in London. He was buried in the chancel of St. Helen's Church Bishopsgate in London, along with his father, whose remains were moved there to be with him. Pickering had ordered a tomb to be made, instructing that it was to be garnished and decked with the arms coats of me and my ancestors. Now, you've probably never heard of Pickering, but he's a rather interesting fellow in that he was involved in a failed rebellion but unlike some of his fellow rebels, he kept his head. Quite a feat. So let me share with you a few facts about this Tudor courtier, diplomat and rebel. Well, Pickering was born in around 1516 or 17, and he was the son of Sir William Pickering. See, they were not very creative in their names. Uh, Sir William Pickering, his father, was Knight Marshal to King Henry VIII. Pickering was educated at St. John's College, Cambridge by Sir John Cheek. In 1538, he was recorded as being at the royal court and serving King Henry VIII as one of his daily waiters. Henry Howard, Earl of Surrey, who of course came to a rather sticky end, acted as Pickering's patron. And the two men, along with Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger, had to appear before the Royal Council in April 1543, charged with eating meat during Lent and committing acts of vandalism by breaking house and church windows at Candlemas. Some ruffians, I think. Pickering confessed to his crimes and was committed to the Tower of London for just over a month. Pickering went on to serve his king in Calais during the French Wars in the 1540s. John Dudley, Viscount Lyle, and the future Earl of Warwick and Duke of Northumberland served as Pickering's patron following the sticky end, the execution of the Earl of Surrey in 1547. Dudley's patronage helped Pickering rise during King Edward VI's reign. And following Edward VI's accession, Pickering was made a Knight of the Carpet. Now, I hadn't come across this knighthood before, so I did some digging. I looked it up, and according to Merriam-Webster, it is a knight who is knighted in formal ceremony as kneeling in a royal audience chamber, as distinguished from knighted informally on the field of battle, or it can also be a recipient of knighthood for service or distinction other than military. So there you go, there's a new knighthood for you, the Knight of the Carpet. Pickering undertook diplomatic missions to France in Edward VI's reign, where according to his biographer, Susan Doran, he earned the respect of King Henry II of France. But Pickering didn't enjoy his time there. He really wanted to get back to England as soon as he possibly could. In Edward VI reign, the imperial ambassador wrote of Pickering being a creature of Warwick's, unlettered, a novice diplomat and a zealous Protestant. And he wasn't complimenting him by saying those things. Pickering escaped involvement in the events of July 1553, when, of course, Lady Jane Grey was proclaimed queen and then swiftly removed by Queen Mary I, because Pickering was serving in France at the time. After the accession of the Catholic Queen Mary I, Pickering was one of a number of men, including his old friend Sir Thomas Wyatt the Younger, who became worried about Mary's plans to marry Philip II of Spain, and also worried about the religious changes that her reign was bringing. They decided that a military coup might be the only way to prevent her marriage, and so the men planned a series of uprisings. The aim of Wyatt's rebellion, as it became known, was to depose Mary I and to replace her with her half-sister, Elizabeth, who would then marry Edward Courtney, Earl of Devon, an Englishman, not a Spaniard. The rebellion failed, 
and although Wyatt was apprehended and executed, Pickering was able to flee to Normandy along with Sir Peter Carew, where it was said that they were planning to intercept Philip of Spain on his way to England. In April 1554, Pickering was indicted, although he was actually safe in Paris. In France, Pickering changed sides and he started giving information on the surviving rebels to diplomat Dr. Nicholas Watson. He was now in danger from assassination from those he'd betrayed. So he kept on the road, traveling from Paris to Italy and on to Germany. He ended up being pardoned on the 4th of December 1554, thanks to his decision to betray the rebels, and thanks also to the intercession of Watton, Sir John Mason and Sir William Peter. He returned to England in 1555. In 1558, he was away from England again when he was sent to recruit soldiers in Germany to defend Calais. Of course, Calais ended up being lost to the French. Now, this is an interesting fact about Pickering. Shortly after Elizabeth I's accession, it was rumoured that Pickering was a suitor for the hand of the Queen, and bets in London were said to be at 25 to 100 that he would be Elizabeth's king. However, he made it clear that he thought the Queen would never marry, and he himself never married. In 1569, during the Northern Rebellion, he was appointed as one of the Queen's lieutenants, and in 1570, he was on the commission that tried Catholic martyr John Felton. He died on this day in 1575 at his home, Pickering House, in London. He was about 58 or 59 years of age. As I said, he never married, but he left an illegitimate daughter, Hester. In his will, he left instructions for a jewel worth 200 marks to be given to the Queen by his executors. He also left money to the poor in his parish and money to St. Bartholomew's Hospital and bequests to his daughter and friends. To William Sissel, Lord Burley, he left his papers of antiquities along with globes, compasses and a horse too. He also instructed that his library, which he was very proud of that he'd built up over his lifetime, was to be passed on to his daughter's husband. And his bequests to his friends and family show that Pickering died a wealthy man. So, a wealthy man, a rebel who survived not only being indicted as a traitor, but also the vengeance of those he betrayed. A rebel who died a natural death on this day in history, the 4th of January, 1575. That's quite an achievement, I think. Thank you for joining me. You can subscribe to the channel by clicking round about there. You can hit the bell to be notified as these videos go live. And you can, of course, leave a comment and give this video a like. I'll see you tomorrow. Bye-bye.